see what conditions and stuff we're supposed to play. Blind tee shot on 5, the par 3 over 2, 30, and 2 bunkerless holes on 7 and 13. We'll kind of keep an eye on that. Only one set of tees plays as a 71 diabolical, very diabolical runoffs. Very diabolical runoffs. Sounds like something that Tim Curry should be, uh, should be laughing about, honestly. I love the way he laughs. He's very much that way. Let's begin the round. And we have a ginormous turd joining us now. One Gary Trayson. See, Terry, that would be your PGA name. Gary Trayson. You know what, Petty, if nothing else, if, if nothing else on here is good, this is one of the better overhead shots I've ever seen. Look at the texture differences. That is beautiful from an overhead standpoint. I love that. Very good. Sorry, I guess I could look at that for a while. Matt, paint this. This is the coolest texture thing I've seen. As far as what it looks like down here, I have no idea. I like it. I like the dead trees. They're used a ton in this course, it looks like, but I like it. I like, and this is something I want more people to pay attention to, and Petty, you, I, I think we talked about it, your Kamori cliffs or whatever you didn't do as well on some things, and then you did better on the last one. And on this one, I really dig the uh, the texturing, but I like the fact that this is super wide, and yet there's really, you know, I really want to be right here. I don't want to go down here. I don't want to go up here. But hey, I'm going to get it in the fairway, which is what I like. I like pines in my designs and my paintings. Well, good. You do it from an overhead view. Remember how I said I was going to be in the fairway? Yeah. I am. I am in the fairway. It makes me happy. There's the old... The old gator smoking. I sent, uh, I sent the damn guys some pictures a buddy of mine did when he was actually smoked some gators for uh, Clemson football stuff, which is good, good times. I would feel better if that was up, if this was like the halfway house. I do like that you have cornhole. I think that's the best thing is cornhole. The rest of it's nice. Cornhole wins. All right. 229, up 18. Can we half shot this? Can we do like so? Nope, I got 100 and fast. Dang it. I wanted 95 and normal. Come on, come down that hill too. Yep, go ahead. Run right off the green. Go. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Matt gives you an extra five points. Too bad he's not judging. And too bad the only amount you can earn for uh, bonuses, and I should put a thread on this, but the judging, basically, I'll, I'll let people know here, the judging is a 50-point 50, 50, uh, deal. And then each required element being judged is 10 points for a total of another 30. You will start with 30 and you will lose points if the element is not completely uh, accomplished. It doesn't have to be accomplished super awesome. It just if it's accomplished, you get the 10 points. Now you can earn bonus points for doing it super duper well, but it's not a lot. It's literally only plus one or plus two for a potential bonus point total of plus six. Six points doesn't sound like a lot, and it's not when you talk about 80 points, but it's also plenty to, to uh, separate people. And the reason I did it that way is um, I feel like, oh, shoot, my tempo is just going to be a wreck this whole, whole round. The reason I did it that way is I think that making each required element worth 10 is going to artificially... Um, inflate some scores, which is fine. I, I'm struggling on this course with some uh, lag, which I normally don't have, so I don't know. Whatever. But it will artificially inflate things 
and uh, having the bonus point structure the way it is will keep things artificially closer in score. Will it change the outcome of certain matchups? No, it's not going to change the outcome. It's, it's really not. And if it does, then you've done something really bad. Um, but it is going to make things appear to be tighter than they may have been otherwise. And I think that's part of what you're looking for in a competition like this. I like the uh, no light rough idea, especially if the fairways are wide. So you'll never hurt my feelings by dropping the light rough. I'm not sure how people on CC will feel about it, but I think they'll get over it. What do you guys think about that for scoring? It'll be a, a, a total of 80 points. Um, 50 for standard judging, 30 for each required element. Um, some bonuses allowed, but really designed to artificially keep things closer than what they would normally be. That'll work. Will the scores for courses 11 through 30 also be released? I don't know. We'll have to see how they are. I mean, take this the right way, but a lot of times in contests, the score disparity between the top 10 and, um, yeah, it's just going to be a straight ranking. Uh, we'll probably, we'll pare it down in the judging, but it's just going to be a straight ranking. There's not going to be any head-to-heads or anything like that. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah, sometimes the score disparity is so great that releasing the lower scores really doesn't help anything or anybody it just serves to be a frustration see now i'm going to tell you what's smart about this hole and petty knows this and some of the other guys probably know it but if i want to take on as much as possible i get to narrow things if i want to take on a little less i mean i'm going to have some bad angles and stuff but it really forces some thought and i i like that there's no bunkers the fairway's super wide and yet i really have to think my way through this one a little bit I think this is probably going to go through, but I'm going to do it anyway. If for no other reason than just to see how far it rolls. Nope, we'll be okay. We'll be down in a flat area. But if you missed that little window that I just hit it into, you could very easily go places you don't want to be. Also, look at this. Look at this green. See, a hole like this that's this short and the way it works, it can have a green like this. And you can get away with it. Some you just you can't you can't get away with it. Oh, another fast. That'll turn out okay though. Go in the hole. Go in the hole. For instance, I mean if if um, like some of the judging stuff from the major competition leaked out somehow, I have no idea. And um it did nothing. It didn't help anything. It just caused consternation and problems. This is a beautiful blind tee shot, Brian. I love it. Uh, the way you've used the ground and the rocks here together remind me a little bit of uh, Old Tom's Ferry, only with a different a different uh, overall look. But that's really really well done. Um, even the hill off to to the right is really well done. I like that a lot. And the fact that you joined these together. Um, it's just very smart. I feel a little bandity here, which I like. 18 and Marianish, yeah, I'll take that. That's cool. Ooh, ooh. This is well done, too, and I'll tell you why. This is well done because this is a par 5. If this were a par 4... And you had like a 200-yard shot into this green, I would say you're an idiot. Um, but this being a par 5, again, you've got some options. You you want to get way up there tight, you go right ahead. You want to lay back to a full wedge of some sort, you've got a little more room. But this is, this is well done. Especially off this side hill lie. It definitely banded-ish, yeah. Well, just in that it moves your ball around. Um, you know what I mean? It, it, there's plenty of room, but doggone it, you better hit the place you want to hit. I forgot I took my lob wedge out. 
That ought to be good, though. Every course I've ever released, I feel like I want to go back and do a few things differently on. Um, Bandit, there's some planting I'd want to do differently. I'd want to do I'd want to do the the tour version as the original. This hole is really well done too. I'm just going to tell you, so far I I am enjoying this course more than Cypress or Komori. Um, will everybody? I don't know, but I am enjoying it more just because I, I see what you're doing here and you're making, take this the right way as I know you will, you're making better design choices here, I think, than you did on both of those. And those weren't bad. I just feel like you've made better choices here. Uh, if only I could make decent swings, but that's okay. And if people don't agree with me, that's okay. I'm just the contest runner. I am not on the judging panel at all. And uh, Cyborg is the uh, coordinator. But, yeah, and I see saw your comment about luck of the bounce. I don't see it as luck of the bounce. I see it as playing to parts of the fairway knowing that the ball is going to move a certain direction. Um, and it's not really luck. It's saying, okay, I, I am willing to take on this place where I might get a bad bounce, whereas I could lay back or go over here and I won't get a bad bounce. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'm going to say it. I think that your green sizes on this particular um, course are better than your green sizes were on uh, Komari. I think there were a few that I would have liked to see a little bit larger. Not not having a larger play area, but having a larger area just of green with maybe some runoffs on the sides. You know what I mean? There was that one that was down off on a cliff, like one of the early ones that everybody was gaga over. And I thought, you know... If he had brought that green further in to the right near that bunker, I think it would have just been a better hole. It would have played exactly the same. I think it just would have looked better and felt cleaner. Things like that. And you've fixed almost all of those here. Yeah, I see this hole was a pain for you, wasn't it? I bet this hole, I bet this hole when you were designing it made you want to pull your hair out. I'm not even going to say why right now. Just, just answer me. Am I right? Did this hole make you want to yell and scream a little bit. <laughs> I dig that. Yeah, you want to know why? It's primarily because you're going uphill and you your lighting, I know that you probably set the lighting ahead of time and I bet the lighting on this whole just made you want to go there's just no way I can't get this to look as good as I want it to so this is what I'm going to do and it's going to play great and people are just going to have to deal with it so I'm not even thinking on the green I'm just thinking from a visual standpoint that tee shot was very very difficult to uh, to try and get right and I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think you were 100% satisfied with where it ended up I don't think it could have been any better. I just don't think you were 100% satisfied. See, this shot here, um, there are two designers that this shot reminds me of. One is R.J. Wills. This is an R.J. Wills tee shot in that it's wide open. It's a beautiful landscape. It's a little downhill. But if you if you try to do that, you've got some cross fairy way to deal with. The other one is Dario. Dario pulls off... Um, tee shots that just they bother you from an angle perspective a lot that slow is going to kill me I was hoping to bounce into the fairway anyway Dario does that too and um, I wish I was better at it I don't think I'm bad at it I, I think that I play it too safe in fact there's one thing I am just really bad at that I do need to work on and that is um, dog legs that turn in such a way that they're a smooth turn but they cut off your driver um, 
I'm just terrible at them. And it's usually because as I'm designing them, I'm going, I don't, I don't want the trees to be in the way. I don't want the trees to be the determining factor on my tee shots. I feel so lazy when I do that. This one is striking me a little weird. I think it looks good. Um, I think it looks good. I just, I feel like this is actually going to save some people from coming all the way down here. And I don't know that that's what you wanted to do. This green is a little smaller than I would like. Again, not from a play area perspective, just from a size perspective. I feel like you could have given it a little bit more, accomplished the same thing, but made it made it feel a little bit easier than what it is, and that slow is going to kill me. Heck, nab it. I, I always feel that way about trees. I, I wish that I was comfortable saying, no, I'm just cutting this through the forest. You know, that's just what it is. But I'm never happy doing it. Every time I do it, I end up going back in and deleting them. You think they're fine where they are. Which are fine where they are. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember what I said. Help me out. I don't remember. I'm a senior citizen. Not really. This one's borderline for me. Like, I feel like a flat area, somewhere there's got to be a flat area. And instead, what we've got, we've got a bowl here that traps things that are short. And I'm okay with that. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about those trees at all. No, no, no. That didn't bother me at all. We were talking about different trees. Don't worry about it. Oh, on there. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys are talking to each other. I'm an idiot. You said Brian, and I assumed you were talking to me. Since everybody's named Matt, I just, I'm not used to there being other Brians around. It's always Matt, Matt, Matt. Bunch of idiots. No, I didn't think those trees were a problem at all. I thought they were fine. Oh, Brian. I'm going to have to teach you something about overhangs, buddy. You're good with rocks, but... But I've got you on overhangs, I think. Maybe you get... Uh, Rockman Dan to give you a tutorial. <laughs> advanced rock placement. Now see if you watch that one and then advanced LIDAR, I mean, you're just like, you don't even need to practice anymore. You're just on it. See, your use of textures is just so nice. Because, see, I, I, I like that you understand, and I wish, people, I wish more people did, that using textures can really just change everything. Everything. Whew. Boy, when that pin is up on that hill, I'm going to be skirt. I'm going to be skirt to death. Come on. Come on. Go, 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 go. Now stop. Well, that didn't work at all. Yeah, screw that Andre guy. That man is a douche nozzle of the highest order. Or the lowest order. Whichever one is better for douche nozzling. Warmest order? I don't know. I will say too, I'm, I'm playing like crap, but this, this course does lend itself to being scorable if you enjoy it. I'll put it that way. For people who don't enjoy this kind of a course, it's very hard for them to score well on it. Like I found that with Bandit. If people didn't like the idea of the course, they weren't going to score well. You have to like the course like this in order to, in order to score it in. 
<laughs> Robert Stack in Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> what happened to him? We don't know. Yeah, Robert Stack, because it was a little higher, like this. But he didn't have quite as much inflection at times. He always sounded like he was not quite sure where he was. Or where he was going. I feel like he wore a trench coat every day in real life. I mean, is that a bad thing? I just picture him as just always in a trench coat. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's just either you like this kind of course or you don't. If you don't like it, you are going to really, really struggle. Because you're going to be like, this is stupid. I don't want to make these decisions. Well, too bad. Suck it up. Make decisions. That's not hard enough. Hey, that was hard enough. Neat. I did it. We did it. Pithy, I'm getting excited about Whistler. I'm getting excited. I've been going to the range and working on some things, and which probably means I'm going to play like crap, but the swing feels pretty good. Like, I'm not, I'm not hitting balloons. I'm not pushing the ball quite as much. No, no, no. Aida is an is a opera by Verdi, and it's stupid long. And uh, there are live element, elephants, so I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. We're going to have a range, like, literally right next to the hotel. And it says it comes with range balls, so... I'm wondering if that's just like one bucket a day or something, because I think it would be awesome to just spend some quality time over there goofing around. It looks like a fun range to just fart around on. And I feel like I've, I've got my legs about where they need to be as far as the legwork goes to get my hands out of it a little more. Um, but I'm not quite going down enough when I swing through, so I feel like I need to get down just a little bit more. Because I'm starting to feel like I'm starting to lift my left hip up and instead of moving it out of the way. Yeah, it's okay, Matt. I really don't care. If I show up and play like crap, you know what'll happen? I'll still have fun and it's not a big deal. Sorry, I'm just looking at this hole. Hmm. I feel like this fairway here, like I almost, I almost wonder if, if joining those two right from here to here might not have been a good, a good idea. I could be wrong, but I think that, uh, hmm. I don't know. Did you ever toy with that, Brian? That just seems like a natural, a natural thing. And it would make that area short feel wider, even though it really isn't. It would feel wider. Um, <laughs> this is a cheaty non-bunker here. That's 100% a bunker. That's just a grass bunker. You shut up. I don't have this club. Don't have this club. Let's try something. 95%. Will that do it? Almost. Yeah, and I think... Now, see, is that one of the ones that we're judging? It is... No, it's not. See, that would have been an interesting thing to judge, to say, yes, I used this template, but the template you used didn't have an actual bunker. You know what I mean? I think that would have been a cool, uh, that could have been a cool thing to have people judge. Now, see, here you've used the shadows. Nice. This is cool, and I'll tell you why this is cool. This is the simplest little hole. 
I mean, just look at it. Is there anything here that just says, oh, wow, that's really, mm, wow, neat. This is a stupid, simple hole. But just because it's it, a framing and some very delicate sculpting, it's just lovely. And I think that's the sign of a good golf hole. Like, I don't need to have a gazillion things going on. Oh, come on, get there. Yes. Go in the hole. No. That's like the second shot I played this whole round that did exactly what I wanted it to do. Which means normally I should miss that putt. But I did not. Surprisingly. Uh oh, this is a Rock Man Dan special. However, however, I think it's perfect for what we were trying to come up with on the uh, short par fours. Hmm. Let's try something. Oh, very fast. Dang it. I want it just fast. Not very fast. Yeah, well. No, you don't need to be iffy on this hole at all. The fact that it's drivable, I mean, I, you, you, could you have done more down here? Yeah, I guess. But why? I mean, you could have, you could have wrapped fairway uh, right down around that corner. Hang on a sec, guys. A second. Oh, hang on. I got to go say that again, again. I'm still here. I just got to listen. All right, then. So a 684-yard par 5 to end with, and you're going to make some people mad. The whole ending on a par 5. Oh, hey, Cat. You are joining in on the last hole of this stream, probably. I, I would do another one, but my mom is in town, and I'm going to go chat with her for a little bit. Um, and then I'll try and do at least two tomorrow, if not more. I like this. I mean, there's part of me that wants to have like a big tree or something here to the right, but I don't think it needs it. So let's just go with it, see how it works. And again, joining those two fairways, that's very much like what I did on uh, Bandit between 7 and 8, where they were joined. Are you going to use it? Not really, but uh, it sure works. Holy putting green, Batman. How much do you pay this guy? You know what? I've liked everything on the course until that. That is crazy. Unless that's going to be like a putt-putt course up there. In which case, go for it. Have a putt-putt course. No, there's not. I've, I've done two, and that's all I can do tonight. Like I said, my mom is in town, and I need to go spend some time with her. She flies home uh, tomorrow afternoon. But that's okay. There you go. Future putting course. Okay. I'm all right with that then. I do feel like, like I look at the overhead, and I see in the texture work you've done on the other holes, though, and I feel like this one has not had quite as much done as it could have. It has some. Like over here to the uh, left, I, I like it, but I feel like a little more could have been done texture-wise to make this one pop. 
I know it's not what you want to hear, but I don't know that you're ending on the strongest of your holes. But I'm okay with that. Some people say, i got to make the last hole the best. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, I'm not worried about the planting. Planting's not a big deal. Um, I think it's fine. I think it's texture work. He could have done something a little more with it. However, I will say, too, that if he's planning on putting tournament objects in at some point, uh, you have some good stuff left here, and that's great. I mean, you've got some good placements. 18 pin 3 Canucks was just bad in every... Yes, this is true. Canucks, yeah, that was not great. Here's another one by Petty. He's done a really good job. He's used no uh, bunkers. There's been some really good design thoughts in there, uh, of course, that will make you think. Is it going to be for everybody? And this is one of those things where, no, that course is not uh, going to be for everybody. Um, I'll see myself playing it many times. Um, I think that the CC guys will be fine there. The pro guys from here is fine. The AM guys from a higher, from a more forward T, I think would be fine as well. Um, and this is going to sound really stupid, but I bet, I bet if you had a, an even shorter version of this, just a little bit shorter. Yeah, this is going to sound dumb. Imagine playing this on the beginner club tour with, uh, with a shorter set of tees, I think that would be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, the lighting was good. The planning was, was good. Um, there are some little things here and there that I think will, will cause the judges to, uh, to question a few things, and that's okay. All of them should be. Uh, there were some really good concepts. There were a few holes that didn't go quite as well, and that's okay. Um, but overall, really good work. And uh, I think Brian is okay with me saying this. Um, he's people thought on Kamari Cliffs. Oh, that's just the pinnacle. It really wasn't. He did a lot of good things there, but there was some room for improvement in areas. And he took that step on Cyprus. And then even when I was playing Cyprus, I thought, you know, there are a few things here. And I'll tell you what, I think doing this course with no bunkers forced you to make some decisions that you wouldn't normally have made. Had you used bunkers on this course, I don't think it would have been as good. Not because um, you're bad at bunkering or anything like that. Just because I think that you, on on even Cyprus at times, the bunkering got a little, a little forced in that um, there were some nice... I think you got the judging comments. You probably read mine. They seemed scraggly around the edges. But then as you came into the fairway, they, they got a little, they got a little placed, um, in such a way as to just give you a hard time. And I felt like, I felt like you would have been better off losing a few, even in a major competition, um, or maybe joining them to the, the, um, kind of natural areas, um, instead of making them so pristine. Uh, I think this course was better off for it, um. In the long run, I really do. Now, what would be cool, and this is just an aside to Brian Petty because I like him and he's a nice guy. Take this course and go put bunkers on it and do it in such a way that they aren't forcing themselves onto the course. And I think that would be awesome practice. I mean, that's what I'd do um, just to make myself better is take this, bunker it, and do it in such a way that it does not change the way the course plays but instead enhances it. And I think that would be a good just exercise in general um, to do. I think that'd be a cool thing. Um, I don't know, but that's okay. I'm going to go talk to my mom. I am going to uh, then go sleep in a tent outside because that's what my children want to do. So that's what we're going to do. Am I going to enjoy it? No, but I'm going to do it anyway. You guys have a great rest of your night and uh, go watch somebody else play some golf. Bye-bye. As soon as I find the right thing to say bye-bye to. Hey, there we go.